Today we're making this L-Fence jig. Hey, it's Jim from the Woodworking Corner. Let me show you how adding this jig to this jig work together to perform multiple functions. From tapering boards to cutting templates to straightening boards, this jig does it all. I'll walk you through the step-by-step -step building process for this jig so that you can build one for your table saw. So stay tuned to see how this jig can beef up your table saw's capabilities and elevate your woodworking game. Let's get started. The inspiration for this jig came from Izzy Swan's video. I'll leave a link of his video in the description down below. It's real simple to make. It's really only three long boards along with a couple of braces and then these slots so it can move up and down on this jig here. If you've missed the, the video for this one, I'll leave the card up here and also leave a, a link in the description down below. my three parts. This is going to be the fence, same size as the other fence. This is going to be the bottom piece here. And then this piece is going to be the front fence. So what I want to do next is give them all a round over like this one, so they all kind of match. So that's the, the next step. So I'm pulling out the same paint can I used to do the other one. What gives this jig's ability to work is for this to be able to slide up and down. So what we have to do is we have to cut a couple of slots into here and then add a couple of inserts into here. That's the next step. And I already had uh, some inserts already ready to go. When I get bored, I like to match them up with the uh, spare parts. So I have these that are already matched up with um, with an Allen key. So I think this would work. I think this will work out perfect for the front of the board. Now from this side, we'll just draw a line down and we're gonna create a slot. Okay, I have my two lines drawn. Now we need to drill a hole at each end to allow this bolt to be able to pass through the hole. Then we can bring it over to the router table. Okay, so I realized that I, uh, using my router table set up the way it is, I wasn't gonna be able to cut this sideways. Um, so I'm going to go in this direction. Hopefully this works out okay. I have, um, I'm using the fence as a stop lock in this direction, and then they have that perpendicular to the fence. So my plan is just to slide the board up and do this nice and easy, and hopefully everything works out okay. And if it works out, then I will do the reverse onto the other hole. Let's do it a whirl. Okay, that worked out okay. Uh, I, I think the, the blade should have been up a little bit higher. So what I'm also going to do is just tap it that way a little bit just to clean up this side to make the slot just a little bit wider. Okay, that worked out better than I hoped. So. Now time to do the other one. 
Okay, I got my two slots done. Uh, a little bit wider than I wanted. So this bolt is a little loose, but adding a washer won't affect it at all. This, this board is never gonna be on the cutting side of the fence anyway. I mean, it's on the cutting side of the fence, but it's not gonna, it's never gonna come into play. This is just, this is just to be able to raise it up and down. And we only need to go that much. We don't have to raise it that, that high for, at least for the work that I do, I don't need to raise it that high. So this, this will work out well. I'm using a 5 16 drill bit to drill out the hole for the insert. I used a piece of scrap behind it just to prevent blowout on the other side. And then using an Allen key, I'm going to screw in the insert. Just making it underneath the surface of the wood. Yeah, I'm really liking how that's coming out. I think we're ready to glue the parts for this now. Before we do the glue up, I need to cut some braces that will go in between the front and the back of the new fence. This is the bottom piece that I'm using as a spacer so I can get the right measurement to cut this piece. Here's the front part of my fence. For the braces, I don't want the braces to be taller than this part of the fence. So I had made this about two and a quarter inches. So I am gonna make my braces about an inch and a half tall. I finally get to use this part of my jig where I can make repeatable cuts. You might be asking, where's the video on this jig? I did build this jig before I made the other jig and the one that I'm making today, but this one was a little bit more intense and took a little bit more time. So I'm still in the editing phase of, build, of the video for that jig, but that one's coming out soon. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, now it's time for glue up. So let's say we want to joint this piece of wood. I took a, I don't know if you can see, but I took a hammer to the, to the edge just to ding it up a little bit. But let's say we wanted to joint this edge. Here's how the process works. You take your piece that you want to cut down. You loosen the bolts on the jig. What do you want to do? You want to raise it up and then using a spacer, which I'm using a half inch plywood, I'm using the spacer between the board and the fence, and then you tighten down the screws again. Once they're tightened, then you can remove both the workpiece and the spacer, and then just giving a little extra, little extra tightness just to make sure nothing's gonna go anywhere. Then your jig is set up. Then you raise the blade up to the height of the piece that you're cutting. Once that's set, then you need a square, you're going to align the edge of the fence to the edge of the blade, picking a tooth that's pointing away from the, from the jig. You're going to take some double-sided tape and apply it to your workpiece. Then you're going to attach your guide to your workpiece, exposing just the edge that you want to join. There's a little lip between the guide and the workpiece. Now that's a very clean edge. And the other beauty for, for doing this is for patterns, for at least for the straight cuts. So I had recently made this Christmas tree, but I made it over at the miter saw. So these angles are 30 degree angles. 
I can get my saw to 30 degrees, but my saw is not long enough to make that cut. So I actually had to do it in a couple of passes, which was a little, a little dangerous. I'm gonna use this triangle as if it was the same, the same thing. And we'll use this to cut out another triangle. That came out so nice. There have been numerous times that I wanted to make a tapered cut on a piece of wood, but never had a jig to do it with. So this works out perfect. Let's say you wanted to taper this board. You'd make a mark where you want the taper to start, and then you'd make a mark of where you want it to end. Join those two lines, add your double-sided tape, Grab your straight edge again, and just put that straight edge right on the line. Just that one feature opens up a ton of possibilities for projects. Hopefully this video has inspired you to build one for your table saw. Thanks for watching.